Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about a high side and low side switch. So in the previous video we've done low side switching and it looks very much like this except I've modified the uh, I've modified the gate pin to be GL which stands for gate low and uh, we have a 1k resistor here. So we should expect that if a voltage is applied between the gate and the source uh, of some kind, usually over the threshold which is typically around 2 volts, uh, that we would expect that there would be current going through this. Um, the, the voltage here is 12 volts. I've kind of abstracted the batteries or at least uh, defined them somewhere else uh, to make the visual, the visual representation of this just a little bit easier. But anyway, 12 volts over here. We should expect that 12 volts divided by 1k when there's current flowing through the MOSFET uh, that we should get uh, a 12, uh, yeah, we should get 12 uh, milliamps of current. So we're gonna run that analysis. Go. Oops, I want to delete this one. Great. There we go. 12 milliamps of current. Now it shows it minus, but if you go back into the DC, you can see that the current is actually going through the MOSFET in the direction that it's supposed to be going. So, okay, so then that's that really. But uh, now the next thing to do is to add a high side to this. So, what if we want to be able to switch onto the load ground and we want to be able to switch battery? So, we're going to disconnect that for a minute, and then we're going to go to the P-channel MOSFETs. And we'll place it like this. Uh, typically, try to use models here. Don't use generics, because if you use a, a generic model, it's actually not going to perform very well at all. You'll get some results that aren't very MOSFET-like. Uh, I haven't di dove into that just yet, but uh, or the reasons why of that yet, but just trust me on that. You don't want to use... Uh, generic models for uh, for a p-channel MOSFET. So anyway, we're going to call this GH. So this is going to be gate high. And uh, we need a difference between the gate and the battery uh, in order for this to turn on. So if these are at the same potential, this is going to be off. So basically, if I want uh, no current to go through the load, I have to do something like that. The, I have a match VBAT between VBAT and it's going to be zero volts. And so this is not going to be on even though this one is. So this has 5 volts to ground, which is going to cause this to open or to uh, to become a pathway. But this one won't, so I still won't have any current that goes through that. So it'll look like this. Run the transient. Right there, and I'm in nanoamps. Right, so, so yep, okay, nanoamps means basically nothing. Uh, every MOSFET is going to have some type of leakage associated with it. Uh, you can't prevent all of the electrons from transferring through the material. They're going to leak through, but MOSFETs have a very low leakage current, and that's why they're chosen most of the time for um, for low, you know, for pa battery powered applications like pacemaker or um, uh, watch or or pretty much anything uh, that you would use that relies upon a battery. Uh, MOSFETs are are what you use. So. Okay, so anyway, we have we have this. If we want to turn this on, we actually need to provide a difference uh, between the source and the gate. So we would do that. Now we would expect that we would get that 12 milliamp current back. Now that we're doing this, so there we go. We're back up. So that's how that's how you do that. And if any of these things fails, meaning like if I decide that I want to change the uh, I want to change the signal here at the low side, that will also make it so that the current is no longer permitted. And so I have two opportunities to control the current uh, that go through this device. So again, back to micro, microamps, nanoamps kind of range uh, stuff. So that's it. That's all. That's really all that you have to do. And, and the one thing that you have to kind of keep in mind is that even though you may have a drive signal that's here, this is five volts maybe coming from a PIC micro or something like that, that if you were to, if, if you wanted to hold this off, the common mistake that you would make is you would say, oh, okay, I'm applying the same drive signal into this, but the drive here is five volts. So five volts minus 12 is gonna be minus seven volts. That's still enough to enhance this MOSFET. So even though this is like a power supply or, or a voltage, it's still not gonna be enough to be able to turn this device off. So if we run this, we should still expect a current. Here we go. I mean, it's a little, uh, the way that this graphic is represented is weird, but it's it's still in the minus 12 amps. So there is there is 12 amps going through this, even though uh, or milliamps, um, 
even though we, we were supposed to be holding it off. So just keep in mind that if you're going to be using a P-channel in a high side, you actually have to use the same voltage that exists at the top of that rail in order for it to turn off. So if I do this, now I should expect nanoamps or microamps, something like that again. Oh, matrix looks singular. Oh, because I don't have anything here. Right, so nanoamps again. So that's it. Uh, this is just a circuit. Uh, this is useful. Studying this kind of high side and low side switching is helpful because the next video that we're going to be talking about is an H bridge, and uh, we have two of these basically, and we have the load in the middle. And typically, you'll have an inductor there, and this is going to be representative of a motor of some kind. But you're going to have two of these like that. And then now what you can do is you can create currents that go from the battery all the way through to ground, or you can create uh, the current going this way. So if this is off and this is on, the current is going to go backwards through the resistor. So you, now you have current control, not just in the amount of current that goes through the load, but you also have the direction control. So H-bridges do that, and we'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching.